Hi folks, this is uh, John Watson, International Master John Watson, and I'm, this is Ask the Master on ICC TV, and I'm sort of fiddling around with the technical side of things here, but it looks okay, I believe. Uh, the main idea of the show is to provide a forum for you guys, the listeners, to ask chess questions, questions about, about the chess world, about openings, about uh, end games, about middle games, about strategy, about how to improve, about books, about videos, whatever sort of comes up. I see there's a lot of people on the chat already. Apologies for the late start. Uh, it was unavoidable. Hopefully you read about it in advance. We tried to send out a lot of notice about it, uh, that we have an hour, we're an hour later. Usually the show is going to be at 6 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, that is New York time or ICC time. And uh, as you may have noticed, it's 7 o'clock now. Uh, let me just check the chat really fast. We've got infinite amounts of things to do today, so I don't want to ignore the chat because I could get off into some details. Um, I'm examining the opportunity to adopt. Uh, first of all, if anybody can't hear this, are there any issues, uh, just say on the chat. Because um, a little curious thing happened when I was setting up. Okay, I am examining the opportunity to adopt e6 after 1d4. Okay, yeah, that's reasonable. Quite a few people like to do that because they're French defense players, right? So they're hoping for 1e4. Uh, apart from the French, it leads to many different openings like the Dutch, Queen's Indian, English defense, and Indian bishop d2. Check, yes, that's true. I disagree with Einhorn's recommendations, especially with knight f3, c5, which allows the Sicilian, good point, with the move e4. Um, so... Uh, yeah, well, you can do a lot of things here. You can play the English defense, just a normal English defense, which can turn into a Queen's Indian, for example, or a type of Bogo Indian here, or just a straightforward English defense, which goes like this. And, well, if this, you go back into a Nimzu Indian. And if they play slowly, you might play f5 followed by knight f6, just to get, a, for example, if here, you, could, you, can, you can play a Queen's Indian probably the simplest thing to do, but you could also think about playing the f5, knight f6 kind of idea. Um, there's even strange things here, like where you double fee and shadow, but there's plenty of options. I would say b6 is a good thing if you don't like a, um, c5. Obviously, you don't want to play queen's gambit declined when you're playing e6, or it sounds like you don't want to play that. So, so yeah, either the flexible move here, and... Um, and then play whatever you want to play here, you know, Bogo Indian or Queen's Indian or Benoni, maybe if you're feeling a little lucky. Uh, two Knights Tango is this move. That's the Benoni there, the modern Benoni. That's the Queen's Indian there. That's the Nimzo Indian. And you can always go back into a Queen's Gambit declined, although I suspect that's not what you're trying to do. Um, so I hope that's a beginning answer to that. Um, Why is this not on now? Has the time changed? Yeah, it has changed. Oh, these are uh, notes from earlier, like an hour ago. Okay. Um, yeah, we did. We, we tried to send out notices about that. I hope we got you know, all over the place, but unfortunately, it's um, maybe we don't have a really good system for that. Um, okay, so, this, so some of this discussion is from uh, some time ago, uh, apparently. There's John Thomas. Uh... I wonder how many people are listening live right now. <laughs> yeah, we got by that by now. Okay. How do you think, John? Huge cups of coffee. Yeah, normally, uh, normally not, but right now, yes. I have a coffee right here. I'll show everybody my coffee. Just made it the last minute. Had to take care of the dogs. I always prepare by taking care of the dogs. Make sure they don't come charging in at the wrong time. Um, yes, yeah, so when I said John being German. All right, happy 4th of July. Yes, happy 4th of July, everybody. And could you please explain why the Scotch went more or less out of style? Good before Kasparov, and what did Kasparov do to make it competitive again? Yeah, I would say also that the Scotch was pretty much out of style, very much out of style. And also importantly, I'd say it's out of style again, <laughs> uh, at least at the top, and maybe even at the, in the middle of, of chess. Uh, there are a couple, you know, Parmesan... Uh, Neji has that uh, DVD on, def on playing it. This is the Scotch, by the way. It's the Scotch game. And um, that's the Goring Gambit, but it's really the, too concrete, too many good concrete answers to that. So that's the Scotch. And um, for many years, uh, Black simply didn't play this. He played the Ruy Lopez instead. And what Kasparov did is he looked at a lot of the old theory. Well, actually, maybe he didn't even look at that much of the old theory, but he looked at all the main lines and, and made improvements, essentially. Uh, he had a computer available. That helped. 
and um, things hadn't been looked at for so long that it was a lot of fun. And so you got these lengthy, lengthy variations uh, for where White would play um, here, for example. He decided to take up this position in, in earnest and played, started an avalanche of theory. And this is still going on, and White still plays this way. But um, so, so he revolutionized this position, which had been considered completely equal before. Uh, and found all sorts of nice ways for White to play and make the, at least make the game interesting and often get a big advantage. He also had to um, deal with this variation and figure out some way of making it interesting because it's, it's not always that, you know, it's not always that easy to play for uh, White because, you know, Black's already caught up in development. And so there are all sorts of lines like, um, well, first of all, you had, see, he figured out some new ideas in these lines, threatening mate. And uh, so he needed to do something for white there, but he also played uh, this way, with um, uh, which often involved a pawn sacrifice if black ended up taking here. It's a little complicated, but basically that, um, he just improved on a lot of the lines. Now the interesting thing is things have gotten so concrete and so worked out that black's very confident in the scotch these days, as far as I can make out. All the, the top players that play it, and even the regular masters that play it, seem to have a, one good solid system pretty much worked out. And so right now we're in a, uh, another fallow period for the Scotch. It's going to need some improvements for white, I think. You'll notice that the um, Grandmaster games are all E45. These have so many E45s, just countless E45s. And everybody's playing either Bishop C4 or Bishop B5. I don't see, maybe even an occasional four knights for a while there was played. But, um, but you just don't see the Scotch as much now. I haven't seen any big games recently with it. Although it's still certainly alive and it's certainly playable. But... Um, uh, maybe more realistic on a somewhat lower level than on the highest levels at this point, because things are just too well worked out, I guess. Okay. Benoni theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not only, well, I think Benoni theory is holding up, but you have to know so much, and it's such a dangerous opening. And so uh, I don't know how practical it is. Actually, I think it's in, theoretically in about as good shape as it's been in for a long time, but uh, we're talking about the Benoni. I sort of made a little comment. The thing is, you have to you have to um, know so much theory in these lines. I mean, you can play the Banco, of course, and avoid the whole thing, which where you don't have to know that much theory. But on the other hand, I think White's a little better. Or you can play the modern Benoni. And the problem is, there's just so many options for White, and and um, a lot of them are very dangerous. It's very easy to go wrong. Black has to play very accurately, so you have to be a kind of a theory hound, I think, to play the Benoni. Um, let me do something that uh, I've got all kinds of questions that came in and other things that are going on. I thought I'd start with something that I, I should be almost tired of by this point, or we should all be tired of, but it just keeps coming up. Someone asked, that someone said they had trouble playing against the London system after d4, d5, bishop f4. Boy, you guys are used to this. Is there an easy way to develop and have a good game? And uh, I just thought, for the record, this is the most commonly asked question on this show. I've been getting it from players outside of the show, too, and people at tournaments are talking about it a lot. The London has become very popular and it's irritating to play against. We've talked about, about a bunch of it, and I wanted to just say, I wanted to show you a recent game, but in particular, it's from a particular system, and that system, basically, it can go a number of ways, but you can play C5 right away even uh, and get to this system, because really, um, E4 is not a great gambit there, but you can play here, uh, now C5, and then, for example, White usually will play sort of that order with knight D2, and then you can play this very somewhat slow move, just intending to play bishop d6. Now, why is this handy? Well, it's handy because, for one thing, it's black. Looking at, looking from black's point of view, it's handy because if you face that move and you're a Nimzu Indian player or an Indian systems player, you might want to play this move. Normally, those might be the structures you know about. And it turns out you can get the same position, uh, you know, one way or another in, in this kind of this kind of structure. You get the same position. So this is your starting position. This is a classical way of meeting the London, probably been played more than any other system, uh, partly because of the reason I just told you that there's so many, there are all these move orders that you can get to with it. For example, if white plays knight f3 here, uh, you might want to play, you don't want to commit to a king's Indian yet, maybe. So uh, you may not want to play that because maybe you don't want to play against the London here. But if you're an Indian player anyway, so you're ready to play against c4 with either bishop b4 check or b6 or something like that, then you're going to be fairly, then you need something against this. Well, this whole system with d5 and c5, either way, c5 first is probably a little more dynamic. Uh, you can even play knight here, you can play c there, and you get this basic position. We've seen this before on this show. 
So I thought I'd show you one game with that. As a po this is a possible system for black, but it's also fun for white. It's fun to play for white. So let me just show you this. The order of this game, I don't remember what it was. Okay, it started with knight f6. It was an Indian system. And a very recent game. And now white played c3. Often white plays c3 earlier to make it easier to meet queen b6, but that's just a side point. Um, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through, through, through some theory here. Not a complete repertoire, obviously. We can't do that. But I think it's um, worth showing a few more lines, because we've seen this position before. Now, white, if, if white takes here, then black's going to play here and get e5 in very early on. And that's very undesirable. Black might even be better in some of those lines. If white lets black take here, now sometimes you can do that and take that pawn structure, but in this particular case, it's a little strange because d4 gets a little weak. It doesn't work out. The concrete lines don't work out very well. So overwhelmingly, what people play here is this move. That's the by far the most important move. The idea being that if black takes, you get the the um, the h file and you can get some fun play. And black almost never wants to do that. And so black castles, and white develops his bishop there. And that's your basic London setup. We've seen this before. We've seen this exact position quite a few times. And black plays b6. Why b6? That's sort of become the main move, and, and it should have been all along maybe. But one particular concrete thing, I'll just do it for the last time here because we've seen it. We've seen it before. Uh, after queen e7, there's this move knight e5, and it used to be thought that black could just challenge that square now, but then there's this funny trap. Now, bl black should play here, and he doesn't stand that horribly, but if he does play here, and we've seen this many times now, so I'm not going to show you any details. You can go back and look at old shows, but there's this funny little trick that actually works for white. It's check, and then uh, check, and then this move knight e4. Whoops, sorry, king here. Uh, this move knight e4, threatening the queen, and threatening knight g5 with mating ideas. And it, it, that, it just turns out all the tactics work for white here, and he's practically winning this position. It's happened in many games now where the black has fallen for that. Okay, so that, that we know. Um, and what does that mean? Oh, yeah, so that means that queen e7 is out of favor, although, as I say, it isn't really that bad because you, um, you can play knight, uh, queen takes. You can also play what someone did against me, Benjamin Bach, a very strong grandmaster, didn't play queen e7, he played, um, oh, I'm sorry, he did play queen e7, and then he played c4, and now the, all these tricks don't work, all this stuff with uh, knight takes, and so, so it turns out, and he played that way, it was a really interesting game, I think actually black can play that way, so you could play queen e7, but by far the main move now has been this move b6, uh, it means that after takes you can take with the pawn, it means the bishop might come here, and it might even come after a move like that might come out to a6 aggressively, it's a good flexible move. Um, so now recently, now most of the time white's been playing just castles here, maybe queen e2 sometimes to stop bishop a6. Uh, ideas of castling, ideas of a3 and b4, I won't go into the theory, we've looked at a little of it, I believe you, you, we've looked on this show we've looked at some, but, um, but instead of that we're going to, let me see, look at the, uh, let me see the chat here because I want to make sure people aren't going, oh, forget this, we've seen this. Uh, Okay, I don't see anything about this yet. I'll get back to those questions, by the way, folks. Oh, Panoff attack. Is this Kamsky Shanklin? No, this isn't Kamsky Shanklin. But Kamsky is playing all kinds of important games as white in the in these lines. Um, what was I going to say here? Um, yeah, you know the 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 hip line these days is uh, black plays. <laughs> see if I get it right. Black plays this, and if here he plays this, and then he plays a lot of times for f5. That's very, I'm sorry, got it wrong, got it wrong, my fault. Uh, it's it's here, taking, taking, and knight here. And if there, you can play f6, it turns out, and if he goes back, you play bishop d6. The idea of controlling that square, and a lot of times you end up playing f5. That's a bit of a hip line that I think is still reasonably sound, but it's not going to surprise anybody at this point. But it's, it's something to look into if you, if you want something that's fairly new and relatively simple. But this is the classical line. And... Um, and okay, black castles and white plays there, and black plays the b6 line, and white just plays this immediately, which of course was always analyzed from the very beginning, but has become sort of a main move. It's certainly the most critical move because it threatens to win a piece. And another idea is that, uh, and all, you can't really, you don't have time to take that because it, you still win a piece. You lose a piece. Don't fall for that trick, trying to isolate that pawn. So you think, well, maybe I can just take that. Now this is attack. Maybe I can take it again. But you can see that white's got some pressure here. This is considered slightly better for white, this whole position. You can even play pawn takes pawn next and have a slight endgame advantage. You see that white's more active there. 
So that's what White's trying to do. Well, the solution to this has been this supposedly brilliant move. Here, it really is a nice move because now you're ready to do things like isolate that pawn in the center because the queen's coming right down the center of the board and the move e5 has lost its, its appeal to some extent. Uh, and so White's kind of stuck trying to figure out what to do here. There's kind of indirect threats on that d-pawn. So in this game, he plays this move, which is the original response to it, but it has a new idea, or a fairly new idea. In the last few months, I've seen several games of this. I don't know what the first game was, was this, but it's actually kind of a fascinating idea. I think we talked about this position as being fine for black. We probably didn't look at any concrete lines here. In the past, um, White has done things like just castle here. Can't remember what else he's done here, maybe queen c2 or something. But um, the, the new move is this. So if you're white or black, you might be interested in, in this position. So what does this do? Well, it attacks this knight, and it attacks that. Bishop takes h7 check. So, for example, if the knight takes, you can go check here. Uh, and now, now I think you should actually go check here, and then here, threatening check. Now, you've got two pawns for uh, a piece already, and black's king is in huge trouble, and you're about to win more material. You have queen h5 as an idea coming too. So this is extremely difficult to hold this position for black. Probably pretty much impossible. Probably this is just completely lost. Um, so that's black's problem. So what does black do about it? Well, black does the obvious thing. He takes here, and white takes there, threatening checkmate. And black plays the obvious move, g6. And you might ask, well, what is white doing here? Oh, by the way, I should say uh, in this position, let me see if there's any, if I have any notes besides uh, bishop takes d2. Um, yeah, overall, I think this works out very well for white if black takes this. It looks very nice because you keep white's king in the center, but now you still have to do something about, about this checkmate. So you're probably going to attack that, and this time white can move forward. Um, so that would be particularly ugly because there's things coming in on the dark squares. And there's also h4, h5. So actually, g6 probably wouldn't be played. You'd probably play h6. But this position, it turns out that white king is totally safe up on a square like that. So this position turns out to be quite good for white. Um, it's maybe playable for black. White's basic idea is very simple. He's going to play, I think that's the best move. You could play queen e8, but it's the same answer. White, white's idea is very simple. He's just going to attack like that and move his h pawn forward and maybe even bring the rook up. It's black can you know barely hold this position and maybe not maybe have a just worse end game or something but he has to play perfectly and he's getting attacked and he is worse so that's just a bad move bishop takes believe it or not strange strange that would be true but it is so black has to play there so that white can't play queen h6 and white comes back defending the knight and and it's a sacrifice it's a pawn sacrifice for white because the d pawn's hanging and in fact that's usually what black will play right now and white counterattacks with this move. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but it's it's a fun line for white. On the other hand, if black knows what he's doing, I think black's okay. So it's one of those fun, interesting things. It's been played by some very high-ranked uh, uh, grandmasters recently. So it's worth looking at, if only for that reason. Um, in other words, they, both, they trust both sides of it to some extent. And white's done pretty well so far. Um, this line has been played a bunch of times. This is all in the last few months, by the way. So it's kind of uh, this is all kind of new stuff. And then here, here, and Black's tried a bunch of things, but White's done pretty well in this position. I guess I wouldn't recommend this. Queen c7's been tried, d4 has been tried. But basically, this, this attack, h5 and queen h6, is very hard to meet, even by a sophisticated player. So I wouldn't really want people who don't have a lot of experience to play this way. It's really, I, I won't go into detail there. But there's some nice wins for White there. So it's, it's an incentive to play this for... Um, for white, by the way, the fact that most of the sidelines don't work out very well. Now, in the in this game and a couple other games, black played this. The main, the best players play bishop h6 in this position. I think, personally, that if you're black here, you want to play this move and just study it a little, and I think you'll do just fine. I think this is a pretty good position. I guess people were scared of losing too many dark squares, but, but the point is they keep the dark square bishop. And you are a pawn ahead, and there aren't that many attacking pieces, and I think this position is actually pretty good. I could show you um, let me just, this move actually threatens this and that, and there's no time to try and smash through here. You have to take back. And then um, g5 is a perfectly acceptable move here, but so is just king g7, covering these dark squares. And um, I think if you're careful here, now you have to study it a little bit. I think if you're careful here, though, you'll be perfectly happy. As um, In all the games that have been played so far, black's played this move. 
and that has a certain amount of danger. Even this move is very interesting, cramping black. I'm thinking about moves like knight e4 because queen coming to h7 would be too strong. Um, this position's hard to play, I think, for black. It's probably okay, but it's hard to play. And white's won a couple nice games. In fact, maybe, wait, is that what happened in this game? I think actually maybe by transposition that's what happened in this game. Let me just check this real fast. Yes, it is, sort of by transposition. That, that idea happened anyway. So he didn't have the knight e4 idea, but he has a very strong knight, a bishop. Uh, that's a lot of material for just, that's a lot of uh, activity for just one pawn. One of White's ideas now is to play knight d4, and another idea is to play knight back and knight up. So this is kind of a cute, a cute uh, example. But let me go back a few moves. And just, just to confirm, if you, want to, if you want a line to play for black here, play bishop e7. And even though this looks awful, you can always get rid of these guys. Um, put the king there, and that means that there's no way to get in, because you can always put the rook over here if you have to. And you are a pawn ahead, and a pawn is a pawn, and, and it's it's actually, uh, and this bishop is still on the board, so there's always bishop back to g5 in key positions, or bishop back to f8, or, or maybe covering, if you're going to play f6 or f5, that bishop is right there covering all the dark squares. So I would recommend this as a system, if you want to, if you want to play this whole system for black, you can play this way. But let me show you the game, because it's cute what white's ideas are. It's a pawn sacrifice, as we mentioned before. And um, now black has gotten away with h6 in other games, but in this game, uh, white just got the better game. Let me just see if I have any real notes here. I think white's a little better here. Um, black plays this move. I think that's a pretty good move, because he needs a little space over there. He can't just sit around forever with his bishop being so passive. So white takes, black takes. And white plays. Um, interesting move. Yeah, well, first he castles. And then black plays back, which makes sense. He wants to play h6 to recover that pawn. He also wants to activate his bishop again. And white plays this nice move here. And there was another game where white played this move, which I think might even be a little more flexible. You still got ideas of playing here, but it works really well against e5 because of the pressure here. Uh, both moves give white an advantage, I think. But... Um, just for the record. So you, if you want to be white, it'd be fun to be white in this position. Now you're threatening to take this and take over the e5 square. Well, you're, first of all, you're threatening a whole piece, and you can't take this because you just win the piece anyway. So you're only a pawn down, and you're threatening this, and when black defends that, uh, let's show you that first. If black just defends that, one thing you can do is just run over here. You're still a pawn down, but look how horrible that bishop is and how exposed the king is. And so this, this is one way to play this position. Now, you don't have to... Um, to take that, but I think white's better here. Just for example, let's say he plays queen e7, I think that's the best move. And then queen takes, I think is, uh, king takes is the best move. And now you go rook here, attacking here, you're gonna have a much better game if you can take that and put a knight on, on that outpost. And this square is, is vulnerable. So you can play queen e5 check here very soon. For example, here, check. Now if he wants to defend that, he has to go here. He probably should just give it back um, because now this move's very strong. Now we have rook e5 coming, doubling rooks and attacking here, and also the knight can come to e5 in a lot of lines. So this is this is just very good for white. Anyway, it shows you what fun you can have attacking as white. In the game, black played that instead to defend the knight there, but, uh, but all these squares are a little bit loose. And white played very nicely, simply attacked that square, and it's too hard to defend that. If you try to play bishop up, you lose your knight. There's no easy way to defend that. If you bring the knight back to defend it, you know, you're losing this with tempo. Everything's falling apart. White is probably almost winning this position because that once you win your pawn back, every, everything is weak for black. Everything else is weak here. So um, what does he try? He tries that move, maybe maybe, maybe the best move. And then, and then there's this very nice combination that happens. This one seems really easy. He takes because if black takes, you have captures. So that part's really easy. So white got his pawn back. Black goes back, thinking that he's threatening that knight. And now white plays a nice little combination, a very pretty combination that makes this game worth showing. Um, and a fa fairly deep in terms of number of moves. But, um, but not too surprising, because look how active that is, and that is. And black isn't developed yet, and he's passive, and the king is exposed. So it almost makes sense that there's something. In this case, it's that move. And I don't know how early he saw that, but it's very good. And it depends on this very pretty idea. And we, I'm not going to show you a lot of details, but bishop takes h6 is pretty much forced here because uh, the king's too exposed otherwise. So he plays bishop takes h6, 
and white plays check, and here comes the point. Now, now on something like this, he's just going to lose to rook d6, or actually queen e, the check is going to also work his move. Okay, so anything's going to work there. So he has to move the king, and now the point of the whole combination is this move, rook here, attacking the queen and the rook, and well, really the point is what happens next. Black goes back, and white takes that, getting his piece back. So, so now white has two bishops, black's king is totally exposed, everything's fantastic, and you might say, well, wait, why can't I just take that? It's because, so you can see this is a very deep combination. He had to calculate all this, and he even had to calculate this position to make sure it worked. And it turns out this position, White's winning by just probably just capturing something here, or doing something like that. But he also has this very cute win here, attacking the queen because the rook can't, isn't defending it. And if the queen takes, it's checkmate and one. And I won't go any further, but that that's a killer move. It just everything ends up falling apart at that point. Very nice little uh, game uh, combination. Black played well and avoided that combination by developing. I don't know how much further I'm going to go because we have, you know, tons to do today. And um, and you can see that White's now got a positionally overwhelming game. In fact, in fact, that's probably not even the best move. It, he's White's much better here, but it could have maybe you know played more efficiently and won more easily here. I'll play a few more moves. Let me see how long I should go here. Uh, that that bishop on um, f5 was hanging. Now a mate on h7 is threatened, and now the bishop on f5 goes again. Now it's in return for the bishop on c6, but once that bishop goes, then defensively, black's having real trouble because white's bishop is so much better than black's knight. Now bishop e5 check is threatened, and now black, white's going to double on the seventh rank, and there's nothing to do about it. And I wonder if I need to go much further. Uh, I can show you a few more moves. Now he's got to do something about this, which is going to lead to a pretty quick, well, there's nothing to do about it, really, because if the knight moves, you have bishop e5. Well, there you go. White's a pawn ahead now, plus having the two rooks roaming on the seventh rank, plus having this bishop, which is a dominant piece. So I'll just stop there. Okay, let me go back to the chat, but I thought that was interesting. It gives you a good system against the London system to play, but it shows you how white can have fun also. It's worth studying the system because you can play it in any number of move orders. And white can't really avoid it, I don't think. If he's a normal London system player, this is pretty much a normal system. And you can learn all the deviations pretty easily, but white doesn't have anything dangerous that he can do here. So this position is the one to study, and in particular in this game, you can study the E4 line, which is very critical. You saw it led to this huge attack. Um, normally white does something slower, and then black just develops and has a really comfortable, nice game with complete equality. Um, and we went over some of this stuff earlier on this show some time ago in the lectures. If you look at the, my list on Facebook, my Facebook page, John L. Watson. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention how to send questions. I, don't think, I think I just skipped that. You should send your questions by email to askimwatson at chessclub.com. That's A-S-K-I-M-W-A-T-S-O-N at chessclub.com. Uh, and I will, that gives you a chance to really ask a careful question, maybe with some analysis or a game or comments that you've been thinking about that you might want me to talk about. I got a good one this week, actually, um, a particularly good general question this week. Okay, so let me, let me um, go back on the chat and see how much I can catch up on here. Boy, this is a long chat. Okay. Uh, all this German stuff going on, the scotch. Thanks for showing up on holiday. Uh, last name, E45, Kasparov, there we go. I didn't expect to show. Yeah, I'm sorry about the hour delay. That that's, came about first, bureaucratic reasons. Um, Alan, I got cut out in the line. Okay, let's do this. I got cut out in the line. Uh, I see F3, oh, I've got something wrong here already. Knight C3, Knight F6, F3, oh, Knight F3, probably. Knight F3, Knight C6, there we go. G3, E4. No, I think E4, oh, oh you're going to get your knight trapped. Yeah, this is a famous trap if you, if you don't play this uh, right, but I'm sure here you're fine. Yeah, here takes. Now, fortunately, you're not, you're fine to take this here because you're able to get, you save your knight, but um, no, no, this shouldn't get you in any trouble. Uh, because after f5, you come back again. This is a well-known line. White's supposed to be much better here. Having gotten rid of a center pawn, now you've got two center pawns to none and you're a pawn ahead, right? So um, so this is good. The point is, is that he can't take that because you take here, and he can't take 
here because you well you can do it but but then the bishop defends the knight so it's a little trick it's sort of a well-known old theoretical trick that doesn't work for black there are similar tricks where the knight simply gets trapped on e4 and you lose a piece so you should always be aware of that theme but this one doesn't work so so you'll be okay next time just remember that knight g5 move okay uh hi john could you please explain some ideas from the fantasy variation of the carol can oh <laughs> i am not at all an expert on the fantasy variation i think we talked about it briefly once but um I looked up some lines, I think. This is called the fantasy variation. It strengthens white's center. It makes total sense. The only problem is, is white's kind of loose here. And uh, ideas depend on what black plays. Black's favorite move these days is just to play there with a sort of a French defense. I mean, if white now advanced, for example, black would attack in the center and have a French defense. Um, and it's just a very, very solid move. It also threatens a pawn because it threatens to play, well, more than a pawn. Uh, let's say white did nothing. Black could play this way with check and then famously either lose a pawn with check or famously lose a rook with by allowing that check. So that's kind of a threat black has once the pawn's on e6. You'll notice that he didn't have that threat before because the queen was blocked from there. But after this, he's kind of got that threat. So white has to react to that. And white will often play either knight here, that's probably the main move, or maybe bishop e3 has been played. Um, so, so ideas. Uh, the ideas for white is just he's got a big center. And black doesn't have a pawn on c5 or e5, so white has two center pawns on, on large squares. The idea for black is that white's, this is taking away the best square for white's knight. Uh, black has decent development. This is a pretty good move right away. Just playing bishop there, threatening this again, threatening takes, takes, and check. Um, ideas for white. Well, the idea is just to, just to keep a good solid center, try to hold down that center. Um, the other thing that, originally was thought to be strange about the fantasy variation is this move, once again threatening queen h4 check. So white has to sacrifice a pawn. Well, he doesn't have to sacrifice a pawn, but if he takes this back, for example, with the queen, you've got a very bad endgame here because that's an isolated pawn on an open file, and black has no weaknesses at all. So, and it's black's move, so this is fantastic. Black isn't even behind in development, and it really has a winning endgame because that pawn on e4 is so weak. But White's idea turned out to be this one, to get a big lead in development and almost King's Gambit style, try to get a rook on an open file. That's, uh, it looks like this is almost winning at first. I think, I think we looked on this show briefly at what black, can, what black does in this position normally. It turns out this position is playable for black, but it's also playable for white. I mean, you've got a nice attack. It'd be, to me, it'd be more fun to be white here. It'd be, it'd be much you know, easier to be white in this position. On the other hand, black is a pawn up, and um, you know there are these weaknesses, and even that pawn's a, a weak pawn. So, so most people don't play this line for black, but you still have to consider it. It's still a, a le considered a legitimate move for black. Um, what else about the fantasy variation? What else do people play as black? To tell you the truth, I'm not really sure. Maybe they play knight of six also, and I assume at that point you really do play this move on the grounds that the knight's not that well placed for for this kind of position. But I don't know if that's true or not. I don't. E6 doesn't look right at all. Maybe C3 and F. Thinking about F4 and Knight F3. So it's again very French-like, with the idea of C5. But this looks like a, a good a good version for White. So um, so those are the two lines I know for Black, and those are the ideas. The idea for White here is just hang on to the center. Play this. Play this. You might even uh, go Queen side. You might think about going Queen side, uh, or just put a Bishop here and a Knight here and Castle and just have the center. Have more control of the center and try to get those pieces out because this is a non-developing move that's another little bit of an issue um, maybe someone can tell me more about this okay hi john could you tell me yeah okay that's not three chess philosopher pound off attack seems to give good chances for white isn't the french monte carlo basically the same it doesn't seem to be held as in, in this high regard for boy i'm way behind aren't i this is a <laughs> i'm gonna have to catch up on this chat I see that some of the comments were a long time ago. Um, first, let's talk about what the panoff is. It's this line, Karakan panoff. It's not held in that high regard for white. You won't find that many people playing against the Karakan. This is not played that much these days against the Karakan. And I think the main reason is because, sure, these lines can be kind of fun for white. These lines where you take here, for example, can be kind of fun, although they're considered OK for black. But this has been a real problem trying to make that work because this traditional classical line here still seems to be quite decent for black. 
And there's all kinds of theory I and mean, tons of theory that I've worked on with students before, but I don't think white can crack this. I think that black's going to be equal there. This is not, uh, the panoff has become a lot less popular. I think it's still fun to play. There's still things you can do. I mean, for example, you can play this move. Um, but if black knows what he's doing, it seems like everything's okay for black. Now the question is, what about the, the French uh, Monte Carlo, which I have no idea what it is, so let's see what we're talking about. Oh, we're probably talking about this. You consider that the Monte Carlo? That's, I just think that that's the 4C4 variation, which is reasonably popular, actually. Uh, it doesn't seem to be held in as high regard. Why? Well, you haven't wasted the C6 move, so you're a tempo up in a way. I mean, let's say you play there and here. Well, now instead of playing C6, you have, you have nice options. You have moves like that. You have just bishop E7. And a lot of times a knight will come to c6 and put more pressure here. So that's a pretty easy question to answer, is that black in the panoff has taken that whole extra move with the c6. Um, that's actually maybe not the greatest answer in the world, is it? Sorry, folks. Let me, let me think about that again. Um, hang on. Let me think about this. Well, for one thing, black has two center pawns here. Think about this. I guess I, I don't relate. The two, two, two positions seem so different to me that I, I'm, trying, I'm having trouble thinking about comparing them. Let me compare that position. Think about that for a while, which is respectable for black, or um, this position, which, of course, I know really well because I've written about it many, many times. This position. Why is Black happier here? Well, Black's getting his pieces out quicker. The bishop, that's it. Black, Black's pieces come out very easily here, and there's going to be even a rook on the open file against the king. So maybe that's enough of that. Maybe that's a much better answer. Sorry about the c6, although I think in terms of c6 being not a very desirable move, because a lot of times I like to put my knight on c6. For example, one of the main lines goes, well, you can, you can just go like that, but if you want to, you can also play very aggressively here. There's a kind of a famous line that goes, like, let's play bishop g4 first. Um, something like, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. It, it's, it's something where white has played bishop d3. That's what I wanted. Um, there's a line, for example, that goes like this to get pressure there. there. And if and if white um, simply defends that pawn, then black plays here. And the idea is to take here followed by taking here. Well, uh, with a pawn on c6, you wouldn't have that much activity in the center. You wouldn't have threats on d4. So this is one of the main lines, by the way, and uh, this kind of position. And uh, black actually can't, if he takes the pawn right away, it's not very clear, but black has slower moves like rook e8 and rook b8 and other moves first that threaten to take that d pawn. Okay, so so that my answer, which was not very well phrased, or it took me a while to think of, of, of the answer, is that black's very active here, whereas in the Karo can, he's maybe a little less active, depending which line he picks. Uh, in the Karo can pan off, one problem here is that if black plays this line, for example, the traditional line, or gets to this position by another move order, then he's not getting, he doesn't have the open a file, uh, he doesn't have the open E file, and also his bishop's cut off and can't come out like it did in the other position. So maybe the two, the, the correct comparison would be this one, where black does get his pieces out quickly and, those, and, and manages to get equality. So those two would be both quite respectable um, from Black's point of view. Okay, uh, what do you think of, I should go back to uh, other things I prepared. I tend to forget to do that, but let's do this first. What do you think of e4, knight c3, d oh, we're talking about just all, only white moves to play against some lines of the Sicilian. Yeah, you can play a closed Sicilian with g3 and d3 and all that. I think the, the question is kind of broad. It's something that we would have to, um, for example, if black plays here, this is a typical line you could get. You can also play e6. But uh, yeah, typically white's gonna try and play f4 here. Are those the moves? Yeah, knight f3, h3, g4. Yeah, it's, it's just knight e2, g3. Yeah, the problem is you don't always have that much time to play that way. Black can play either e5 or e6. Let's say he plays e6. That's the normal move. The thing is, it's going to be hard to get. Well, actually, you wanted to play knight e2, g3. Sorry, so let me do that. I think you did, didn't you? No, you wanted to play knight f3. Okay. And then h3 and g4. This has been played a lot, uh, but not that successfully. One thing is black can always play f5 when you play g4. So if black plays, for example, rook b8 here, and you play f4, I'm perfectly willing to play f5 right away. It's very easy to play. 
And yeah, you could try to play knight here and here and all that, but you don't have that much of an attack is what it amounts to. You'll never get through if black's careful on the king side. So this is a perfectly playable line. It's a close Sicilian, but black's happy too. Black just advances on the queen side and in the center. It's considered equal. Uh, but it's kind of a kind of equal where black often gets the better game because white has to play so accurately. Um, but you won't get much of a king side attack doing that. I think that's the main answer. Um, what else we got here? IQP positions, which we know the one who goes with active piece play to compensate for weaknesses. Yeah, it's kind of a general general question. There's countless examples. We've seen quite a few on this show. So chess philosopher, I think I'll pass on that one because there's you know thousands and thousands of isolated queen pawn positions, and we'll probably see a ton of them by example. We've already seen quite a few of them. So uh, on this show, and we'll see more as the show goes on. So just pay attention, and we'll definitely be talking about isolated queen pawns. Four knights with a3 is fun. You can go to Halloween Gambit. Oh, four knights with uh, e4, e5, four knights. Okay, I thought you were talking about the English opening. Okay, so he's talking about this, <clears throat> which we seem to have talked about quite a bit. It's kind of an interesting opening, actually, the four knights. Maybe it'll get a little bit of a, re a revision. Okay, he's saying with a3, as opposed to the normal move, bishop b5, or the Scotch game. By the way, this is also a Scotch game, but it's a particularly easy one for black to play, I think. This is a famous position, this this kind of thing. And um, white plays uh, maybe bishop g5, and queen f3, and h3, and moves like that. And it's considered dead equal. People keep trying to find something for white, but they've never succeeded, even slightly, after 150 years of looking, so... I don't think we can talk about that. Okay, but the four knights otherwise is bishop b5, usually, is the main line. And um, and then black can play bishop b4, or black, or black can play knight d4. So so one thing, one idea is to play a3. This is like what Hugh Myers played. Now, you can play that also the move before this is a possibility. Stopping bishop b4. And... Um, and what you're saying is you're still trying, if black plays here, for example, you can, you can play this move. That's what you're talking about, I think. The point being that after this, black doesn't have his usual defense, bishop b4, followed by knight takes e4. So black has to figure out something else to do in this position. So what he might do is this, then white might play f4 or take. And they're both, it's controversial. I think this is actually only equal if you play really well for black, but that's just my, my opinion. Uh, maybe white gets some tiny advantage. Okay, so that means black maybe shouldn't play bishop c5. So what else can black do to make a3 look sort of too slow or useless? Well, black can just develop. Or black can play g6. Now, what did you say here? You said you can go to Halloween Gambit after g6. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. You're saying you can play knight takes e5 here after g6. Wow. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe, because you don't have knight g6, and because this is these dark squares are a little bit loose. I'd have to uh, examine that. I've never quite trusted this piece sacrifice. What he's talking about with the Halloween Gambit is playing it one move earlier. He's talking about playing it in this position. It's called the Halloween Gambit. It's actually quite unsound. I mean, as in very, very unsound, even though you get scads of analysis on the... Uh, well, I shouldn't say very, very, but black black can get a slightly better game for sure in this, in this uh, opening. But you'll see scads of analysis on the internet about the Halloween Gambit, and even even in other places. Um, okay, so what do we have here? We have uh, oh, but you're saying after g6 you can play this. See, that's interesting because Black has a new weakness here, and he hasn't developed a piece. So I could almost believe this more than I believe in the Hollywood Gambit, the, in the Halloween Gambit. Looks like Black has to go here for one thing, and then. After this and f4, well, it looks like fun. You're going to play here. You've got d6. These are weak. I, I think I believe that. I believe that that could be. I mean, maybe it's only equal if black plays well, but it looks it looks definitely playable and fun. So so he's just shown us a very interesting thing, why a3 has a point, because g6 is very tempting. You just go, look, a3 is really useless. Why don't I just get a piece out? Unfortunately, black could just play here, and I really wonder what a3 is doing. A very solid, nice position, because if, black, if white plays here now, you've got a normal scotch, but black's... Uh, either a normal Philidor with black a tempo up or a scotch with black a tempo up. So I'm sure white's equal, but it's going to be very hard to get an advantage in a position like this because a3 strikes me as being almost useless. Black's plan is very simple. Bishop g7 castles and rook e8, putting pressure on the e-file, and then play d5 if he gets a chance. 
So, um, and the other thing is after d4, I suspect he could just play very simply. But I'm not sure. He could play like a, uh, a Philidor kind of position. This should be roughly equal. Again, Black's idea is to play castles in rook e8. It's a standard Philidor idea where a3 is an extra tempo. Now, that doesn't mean white can't play this. I mean, uh, he is white, and maybe the knight doesn't always want to be on c6 that early in the Philidor. So, um, you know, this is playable. But I suspect black's fully equal. Okay, so a3. I mean, something to do, isn't it? All we look for is something to do in the opening, something to give you some chances. What else could black do? Any other ideas here? I mean, he could just develop, couldn't he? The e7 is not a terrible square at all. Actually, what is the idea after bishop e7? That's that's maybe a bit of a problem. That might be a better Philidor's, actually. I mean, you could still play this move, but then black gets castled really fast. And if this isn't equal, I'd be really surprised. It's very hard to believe white has an advantage here. At least for me. I, 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 I find that difficult to believe. I think rookie a, you might even get a d5 in. I don't think black's better by any means. There's no, I mean, white's played perfectly good moves, and he has that extra tempo to begin with, and the bishop's not real active on e7, so white's got to be okay, but if it's not equal, I'd be really surprised. Okay, good question. Okay, what do we have? Chess philosopher, whoops. <laughs> the four knights. <laughs> hey, we did a, Elliot, we did this huge thing on the uh, the Belgrade Gambit, which I think you used to know a lot about, too. You, you saw that, right? Yeah, yeah, you saw that. So uh, the Belgrade's the fun one. Okay, hi, John. After knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, what's a good way for white to avoid the main lines of the king's Indian? Well, you can play in English. Let me just see what, what order you gave again. Knight f3, knight f6, um, c4, g6. You, you can play a mainline English anti-King's Indian system. It's actually a little late to play against the King's Indian. Uh, I mean, you can still you can still do things like this. They aren't they aren't illegal, but they aren't much fun really. Um, if you play if you play this, you're still stuck in a King's Indian, right? If you play any d4 e4 move, you're still going to get some King's Indian. What you can do is you can play an English opening kind of position. Now, Black can still play the King's Indian, but um, White's going to play d3 a lot of times. For example, in this position, this is a very old line. It's still got some bite, though. It's a reasonable way to play for white. Um, you know, black, if he plays well and knows what he's doing, can probably equalize. But all the lines are still interesting. This is not. This is a position that I think is worth, worth, um, worth playing for white. And and black should probably know what he's doing too. I used to like just playing for e4 immediately and try to chase him back and then playing c6 and d5. But you know, it's a game either way. But white's main idea is to play rook b1, b4, b5 and uh, attack that way. Um, and it's, you know, it's a classic line. So I, I guess that's what I would suggest. I'm trying to think what else you could do. We have, we already have these moves in. How else can you avoid a standard mainline King's Indian? I don't know what happens on, uh, is there a way to avoid it here? I think you, I think eventually you just have to go into an English opening. Now you have to allow a Grunfeld if you're playing these kinds of orders. You know that, right? You have to allow a Grunfeld kind of position. But but again, the English Grunfeld is fun enough for white, or at least interesting enough for white. You can also, if you're worried about the Grunfeld, uh, you can play, say, maybe this move first. And then if they play here, you've got a lot of nice options. You've got queen a4 check. You have queen b3. You have e3. You know, there's those kinds of things. You can also not take on d5. You can play this move. That became popular for a while. I don't really believe in it, but it's possible to play. Um, I mean, I believe in it. I believe it's equal, but I don't believe it does that much. So those are some ideas to avoid the main lines. You see what he's trying to do, everybody? I don't know if I made that clear, but what he's trying to do is avoid a normal main line King's Indian where he's already committed to c4 and d4. And those are a couple ways to do it, um, but a very good question. Um, from the Dark Knight. It's the Batman movie. That's all I know about it. <laughs> I did see it. Something in the line I've played that I've mentioned before. C4, E6, Knight C3. Okay, here we go. Uh, C4, E6, Knight C3. We, I really ought to get to stuff I've been sent, though. This is the last one. We'll do this quickly. D5. What? D5, E3, Knight F6. Yeah, I don't know. How important all this is. Okay, so we're going to go into a semi tirage by transposition. Knight c3, knight c6. Okay, this is a, a main line of the semi tirage. C takes d, knight takes d. You can, you can play e takes d with no problems. Um, g3. 
yeah, G3 is supposed to be bad here. It's inconsistent with E3. After all, the bishop's got a perfectly good diagonal, and now you just make light square weaknesses by playing G3. It doesn't really make much sense. It's not illegal. It's not that bad, but it's not a very good move. Uh, C, D, C, D, bishop D4, bishop B4. I don't know about bishop B4. I think this G3 move is so awkward, I would just develop like this. You have a standard isolated pawn position with that really bad move G3 in. I wouldn't be surprised if black isn't already better here. Maybe not. I mean, maybe, there's, maybe it's just equal, but I, I wouldn't be happy being white. White has to really think about what he's doing. I, I, maybe to be consistent, you have to play here, but that's just, there's not much pressure on black's position, and, and, and that pawn is genuinely a target. Yeah, maybe white's equal, but anyway, so what's this bishop before thing? I'm not real thrilled about bishop before just because it makes means white has more ideas here, like just bishop d2. You say queen c2. Uh, right, knight c3 and knight d4, yeah, that tends to work. That's a famous trick, by the way, a very famous trick. Um, but it doesn't work here, does it? Because of queen a4 check? I don't think this works. Knight takes, you have to play here, queen a4 check. And you win a piece. So I think your double exclamation point is not true in this exact position. But it's good to know that trick. You, you have to know about that uh, that idea if you play the Carol Can, for example, or quite, there's several openings where you need to know that idea, that queen takes d4 idea. Um, but this one doesn't work. So he better not play knight takes pawn there. On the other hand, black could just, I just don't like checking and taking. If you're gonna check, at least don't take, like castle first maybe. I still like black here because the g3 moves so crazy, but anyway, so, so those are the two answers I would make to that question. One is g3 is just a not very consistent or interesting move. And to watch, thank you very much for showing everybody that tactic. It just doesn't happen to work in this exact position, that's all. It's one of those cases where it doesn't work. Um, so now see why that would normally work? Like if you went check, that looks really strong, right? But after this, you're losing your queen. And why else would it work normally? It would work because um, you can't take that one because of knight takes. After you take and take, you still can't take this one because of it's pinned. And if you take that one, you've got this problem with that hanging. So it, it's a really cute trick, it just doesn't work as that queen a4 check idea. Okay, so much theory I don't remember, yeah, me too. Um, Ove Krill um, used to play this. Oh, you're talking about playing about Vinic system against the King's Indian, absolutely. My, that's another kind of English opening, very good. Uh, absolutely true, Elliot. Elliot points out that you can play um, after g6. Oh, no, but actually, I don't like it as much, Elliot, because you don't have knight e2, right? So you can't, if you play e4 now, I mean, you can do that, but it's not maybe as exciting, right? Most of the Botvinnik system guys like to play their knight to e2. In other words, something like this is certainly playable, but now we're back in the King's Indian, and you really don't have much better than d4. And if you throw all these other moves in first and play for e4, well, you know all this. But I think what he was thinking was, wouldn't it be nice if you have played knight f3 already? If you had just played c4 and they were trying to play a king's indian, like something like this, for example, then you have this really nice option of playing the Botvinnik system, which king's indian players a lot of times don't like playing against, uh, playing this move. And then you don't play d4, you just play knight here, castle. A lot of times you'll play d3, maybe h3, bishop e3, maybe d4 later. Once everything's set up, maybe f4, f5. I played this for years for white, actually, many, many years. But with a knight on f3, it tends not to work so well. There you go, exactly. Elliot's got the right idea. If you're going to play, if you're going to, if you're worried about the King's Indian, but obviously he has reasons for playing Knight F3 anyway, first, right? He, maybe he wants to avoid E5. So the, the person asking the question wants to know about Knight F3 first, because maybe, maybe because of this, right? Maybe he wants to avoid that move. But if you did have this move and they were trying to play a King's Indian, Elliot's got a really good point. If you want to set up that, if you want to set up that E4 system, you set it up. Well, you can play this first and then play um, e4, Botvinnik system. Excellent idea, actually, to play for white because people don't know it that well and it's irritating to play against. Okay, one knight three is a mistake. Yeah, there you go. Very good on it. Yes. Okay, wait. I am totally gotten off the point. You people have been sending me all these questions and I haven't answered any of them. Here's a fairly quick one. Let me get, let me do this one fairly quickly. Um, wow. I don't know how much we're going to get to this week, folks. Uh, ex. Oh, man, I've got everything mixed up here. 
X percentage 80. Okay, this one's not too bad. I got asked another French defense question, but it's kind of a fun one, by a very elite player, Jeremy Silman, who was just curious about this line in the French, which goes like this. Okay, now these are all normal moves in the Tarash French. And now this move is actually not played that often, but it has some interesting points. Uh, it was in, I, I recommended it as white in my book, Dangerous Weapons, the French. And one of the ideas is that after black plays, um, whatever black plays, instead of going here, a lot of times, you, ins instead of putting your knight there, you're going to put your knight here, which really helps your attack sometimes. It, it goes to nice squares on the king side and keeps the, uh, the bishop open and the queen open. And uh, so, so there's some cute ideas involved. And one thing I should say about that right away is one problem with this line is queen a5 is kind of interesting, threatening to take, because if bishop d2, then you come back and you're hitting two pawns. Now, white can sacrifice a pawn. Black's goofing around with his queen, right? But it's not so clear how sound, you know, the sacrifice is. So that's, that's one issue right there. Just thought I'd tell you that. But the main line is to go ahead and take this. Oh, I'm sorry. The main line is to take and then play here, just like you do in any other position. And then white has this interesting extra, extra option of playing this move. That's an extra option you can play for white, as opposed to just knight e2, which is the main line of the tarash, or the main line of the knight f6 tarash is knight e2. So that's what white's getting to when he, or thinking about when he's playing this move, knight df3. And the question here was, what about f6 right away? And can white play the move knight g5? Now, just for the record, I should say that if you had taken first and played f6, which is the normal routine, white can't play knight g5 because black plays check, and then whatever white does, you simply take the knight, for example. Um, uh, this check and you can just move the king. Now you're a piece behind, white's a piece down. Now let me show you the difference. The difference there is that in this game, he played f6 right away, and now there's no time to play this check. So if you take that piece, you run into check, and it turns out you're actually better off not playing g6, because after g6, the queen is falling, black's queen is falling as well as everything else. <laughs> but anyway, well, you're losing massive amounts of material, so it's not worth throwing g6 in. What you should do is play king up, and then after check, put your knight back there. And this position is very good for white. It's just a very, very strong attack. It's not absolutely dead lost yet, but it's, but it's just excellent for white, as you can imagine. You're getting your piece back, and you've got a big attack. So the question is, Jeremy's question is, what to do here? And he correctly says the correct answer is this which is kind of a standard reply to this knight g5 ID anyway. You give up a piece, but after he takes that piece, you've earned some space for your, for your king to go here, which is a pretty standard place to put the king in the French defense anyway. And it might just walk over to the queen side anyway, as it does in this example. So Jeremy's asking about this variation, and his analysis goes um, here, See, the point is, if white, if white does something obvious, like just take here immediately, I think queen e8 is, is going to be a is going to be a problem. Excuse me. Play something obvious like that, I suspect, or even this move, because the, the point is the queen can come over very easily, and it's just going to be an even material position where black's pawn structure is pretty good, so it'll be probably about even. So white wants to get, do something faster than that, so he plays the knight there defending this, and he's also thinking about bishop g5 or knight g5. Okay, black runs with the king. Black just wants to get his pieces out, maybe chase that queen away, get this piece out. White gets his pawn back. Remember, white, white was still a pawn behind. And now white would like to play maybe knight here, maybe queen check, uh, and maybe just developing. So black plays a risky move. Uh, now he's a pawn down, up again, but he's um, uh, very far behind in development. So white pins that. Oh, he doesn't pin it. My fault. Oh, white just gets his pawn back with check and check. Now, now black had to make that move because he was in check, but also the, the, the bishop was threatened. White plays here. These are all fairly forced moves. So Jeremy's asking, what do I think about this position? Now there's uh, some threats down the file. So white simply castles out of it. Black plays here, attacking the queen. The queen comes up. A little bit of pressure here, maybe. And black plays this move, queen c6. And white plays there. Nice move, trying to exploit the fact that the king's on that side of the board. Black doesn't want to open up lines on the queen's side against his king, so he goes there and white plays here. And Jeremy thinks that white has 
a slightly better game, and he probably does because he's got this is kind of a backward pawn, and even though White's got Black's got his good bishop left, uh, there's a little bit of exposure on that side of the board. The king's going to be a little bit exposed, whereas this king is really pretty rock solid. Now this is a very small advantage. I think I think Black could play this position without panicking at all, but um, I can see why White might want to play it a little more than Black. Um, I think all of that is interesting, and it's all pretty forced, actually. But I do think that towards the end of that analysis, black would do well to simply play this move, really covering that e-file, really t tying down that e-file, and keeping the, king, the queen further over to this side of the board, over on this side of the board. Uh, the queen on c6 turned out not to be very good. Now if, now if white checks, black just puts that in between and has no issues. Um, you know, if white plays there, you could play. You could play. Anything. You can play this move, or you can even play this move. Actually, this one's kind of cute because if if white tries to grab a pawn, he's probably going to get massacred. Yeah, that's the end of the game, actually, isn't it? Because the queen has nowhere out, and if it takes, you're going to win the get checkmated down here. Okay, so um, anyway, I think that's a very solid, easy position to play. But if you don't play check, what are you going to do exactly? Well, you can play here with the idea of putting a rook here. I just hope to exploit the slight looseness of the king and the pawn there. But then I was just looking at playing very simply here, and if white comes over here, just attacking the queen back again. That seems like a simple solution. And, you know, the computer seemed to agree with that. Um, actually, rook ae1 was what was suggested. My fault. I'm sorry. Because otherwise f2 is hanging in too many positions. And then just this move, I think, was the way I was playing that. Um, See if that's true. Yeah, and if queen h5, you just play queen f7. Anyway, I think this is all just dead equal. I don't think there's any problems here. Black's fine. Black's got a nice, a nice center, and the king's in the, in the middle of the board for the end game. So, thank you, bishop d2. Excellent. That's in fact the best move. But then we have this bishop d6, and I think you'll find that just because I had the computer on it for one thing, that white has no way to make any progress in this position. Um, mainly because of this little trick. That makes that's a nice little trick. That counterattack on the queen gains you a little bit of extra time. That's very useful. Okay, I don't know if you agree with that, Elliot, but that's just basically the computer told me that. <laughs> I won't take any credit for that one, but it doesn't surprise me because Black's got all his pieces out and he's got a nice center and he really shouldn't have any problems in this position. All right, so what does that have to do with anything? Oh yeah, that's an answer to that question. Let's go back to the next question that people sent me, or yeah. Thank you, John, for coming. Thanks for coming on. Uh, the main problem is knight f3 over knight e2 is a bishop g4 counter threat. Okay, Alan, that's true, but there's a lot of theory. You can put the, you can, the bishop g4 is not that big a move. I mean, after all, what are you threatening? Bishop takes e2. You can either stop that with f3. We're talking about that old Botvinnik system, English. Or you can play h3 and get rid of the bishop. So, um, no, well, the computer, <laughs> the computer doesn't have a choice of, uh, of where to put the knight. Uh, if you play the knight to f3 on the first move, then it's not like the computer preferred that move. Oh, in the Botvinnik system. No, well, the computers, if you leave it on longer, it won't believe that anymore. No, I think everyone, should we show that again? Is that worth it? Maybe maybe next week I'll, I'll talk about it. We, 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 can, we can do that. Let's try one more thing to this week, though, because I don't want to get too far behind on things that people sent me. Oh, I got this wonderful question, which I'll stretch over two weeks. Cause it's, a, it's that good philosophic deep analysis question. Um, it, it's, uh, there's a particular pawn structure that comes out of some Nimzo and Queen's pawn games, which I was hoping you might have some insight on. As shown in the games below, he shows me these games, um, which turn out to be Carlson versus uh, Anand and Kasparov versus Polgar. Uh, wonderful games. It's where white gets a pawn on f3, g4, and castles kingside. Let me show you that. I'm going to show you another game first to answer this question, because I'm, I'm being asked what, what's a good system for white, or how, how should white treat this? And the games that he sends me are so double-edged and so strange that they don't necessarily show a really clear-cut line for white. So let me show you what he's talking about with another game. This is uh, actually, what is the name of this game? Kachiashvili Jenny from a long time ago. Long, long time ago. I actually put this game in my book, uh, Mastering the Chess Openings, Volume 2. Okay, so here's the line he's talking about a Nimzu Indian position, which can actually come up from all kinds of different move orders. That's why it's kind of an, a funny question. Um, this is not the normal move order at all. The normal move orders are with f3, or uh, maybe even after e3, but 
for example, the Anand game against Carlson ended up starting with that move instead. And um, just for example, you can get to the positions we're talking about by playing um, here, 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 here. That's that's the starting position. We're gonna. Now I'll, I've got like four games of that. We probably won't go through all of them, but we'll go through at least three of them, and talk about it next week. Um, this is actually a really fascinating position, actually. And and what White can actually play this. Uh, sometimes White feels like maybe he almost has to play this if he plays certain move orders. For example, f3 before e3. If he plays e3 first, it'll turn out he, he has an option of playing f3, but he also has an option of playing bishop d3. And if you don't understand that, we'll go over it next week. You pro probably, that's a little too obscure. So this is a very odd way to get this order, extremely odd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like it's not even related for a second, but you get this position, and then white plays this move f3. So take a look at that pawn structure for a second. That's the pawn structure we're looking at. So I thought this game was very instructive in terms of what is white going for by having this strange little pawn structure. Now, the other games, you'll see, um, for example, both the Kasparov game and the Anand game have completely different move orders. Uh, let me just put one of those up really fast. EX54, 74, for example. Uh, here's one of them, for example. This is uh, Kasparov Polgar, but Anand was similar. This position comes up quite a bit. Now, here in this exact order, black has this nice option, extremely well known. Oh, no, actually, that's not true, because here you have c4, and then the knight has to go back, and white has two bishops for no reason. By the way, here's another f fancy trick that's played a lot uh, that doesn't work. And let me show you. It's very similar to that thing we were talking about earlier. If white plays here now, trapping the knight, it looks like black can come, maybe get out of it, because he's not only defending his knight, but he's threatening uh, queen e4 check, saving the knight. The problem is, is that white can play that move. And then I think black can resign because what happens is black has to go queen back. If he plays queen here, there's just another tempo. That didn't help at all. Um, so black has to play here to save his knight, but then the knight's trapped anyway. Just thought I'd show you that. It's funny that every time, there's a lot of these openings where you have to look at those tricks because sometimes they work for black. So you have to be very careful about playing a move like c4. Anyway, I'm getting off way off the subject. In this game, he plays there, and white play. White could play the move bishop d3. That's a standard move, but he chooses to play f3 first, and that's another standard move, a sort of more old-fashioned move, and that's what happened in the uh, Carlson Anand match. Anand was white, um, and what? Just to show you, let me just show you what happens here. Uh, c4 was played as in the Carlson game, but basically, you could also get after f3, you could get this kind of position here, bishop here, or even knight here. Uh, castles, and then believe it or not, g4 already has been played. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's all neither here nor there for now. Um, let me go back now to the other game, and this will be my last thing today, so be a little patient. This, I think, is extremely instructive, these positions. It's a pawn structure worth learning about, and it's also just fascinating to see how chess works, how the good players think about chess, because White's really ignoring development here to play, playing these f3 lines at least to some extent. In this particular order, maybe he's not ignoring it quite as much. But but even here, you know, Black's got all his pieces out and is ready to bring the last piece out. White and, and has a rook on an open file. White has two rooks doing nothing and a bishop that's a bad bishop stuck behind its pawns. So what does White have? Well, White has two bishops. He has a bishop pair and he has a central majority. And I don't know how many times in this show we've emphasized the central majority. It's a really underrated advantage in chess. It's extremely important. So the question was, what's White's goal in these positions? Well, actually, it's g4 that, that the questioner is asking about. But even here, one of your goals is to get e4 in, then maybe get e5, and then get space advantage with two bishops, and you'll have a huge attack. Well, it turns out the same thing's true in the g4 lines, which finally come about this way. <laughs> OK, we've got that position. And, and this is a very interesting position to me. I think that, in a way, it shows that this, the idea of putting the bishop on b7 is not always black's most accurate move. I think g4 deserves almost an exclamation point in this position because even though white's been making all these extra pawn moves and black's been developing his pieces, for example, black could have every piece out now, and that's indirectly going to be on an open line. And white would have a, several pieces doing almost nothing. Um, and black's, even black's queen can go to a nice, useful square. Uh, in spite of that, I think white's better here because white's, the black's knights are very restricted by this pawn structure. Uh, this knight really doesn't have anywhere good to go in the center. The center is really well controlled. This knight doesn't have e4. It doesn't have g4. It doesn't even have h5. 
So the question is, well, what's White doing? Well, what White's doing is he's going to attack on the he's going to attack in the center or on the king side or both. And what's the plan for doing that? For example, the plan for doing that might be to play g4. I mean, knight g3. And sometimes now he's going to be threatening g5 too to get more space on the king side and just keep attacking over there. But he's also got the idea of playing e4 once the knight's supporting that square. So you know, White might have to reorganize a little bit, put a rook there and a bishop there, and put and play a move like e4. Or white might be able to play uh, knight g3, g5, and even moves like h4 and h5. And, and uh, it's interesting how many attacks. There's a game between Fisher and uh, Georgiou that I'll have to show you that um, deals with this pawn structure. Anyway, this is the basic pawn structure. I just want to show you what white's plan was in this game. Okay, black closed the position, possibly incorrectly, but he wanted to get his knight here, which is what Carlson and Polgar both did, by the way. And um, Carlson did it successfully. And White plays that move I'm talking about. He maybe didn't want to play g5 right away because of knight h5. So he stops knight h5 first and puts more support on that square. And it's interesting how quickly, now Black's very logical, just trying to get rid of that bishop. And it's interesting how quickly things went downhill. Okay, why did White play g4? Well, he wanted to drive away the knight and then get this move e4 in. And once he gets e4 in, he's got this space advantage that might just be overwhelming. And let's see how that works. Uh, black gets rid of the good bishop, the bishop that now is open with, it from, with e4, and white no longer has the bishop pair, but white has space and he has the center. Two pawns in the center, that's white's ideal center, and black hasn't really done anything about that. So this position is actually, oddly enough, already almost winning. And let me show you how that works. Another move you could make here is you could just, oh, my fault, sorry. Let me get real quick to that. Gives you a chance to see it again. Um, Okay. Uh, another thing White can do here is White can play, um, swing this rook over to participate in the attack, either a g6 attack opening up lines or maybe an f6 attack. And you'll see, I think that even happens in this game. Actually, I actually have no notes on this game. I just thought I'd show it because it sort of aesthetically shows what White's trying to do. Okay, now here's a, new, oh, here's a new idea. Now you could just play f4, f5, f6. That's what Anand did against Carlsen, going like that. You could also play h4, h5, Rook over to g2 and g6. You could, there's all kinds of ways to break through here, and they're all good for white, actually. But white finds an even faster way to play here, which really exploits the idea of g4, g5. And that idea is simply that move. Using the rook over here. So he's using that g5 square that way, and now white just has too much attack. This is an overwhelming position, as it turns out. Black probably has to sacrifice back. He doesn't do that, but it wouldn't have worked that well anyway. Um, now the threat is made, so he has to check. White plays over. I don't know if that was forced or I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't really analyzed this game. I've just kind of looked at it. Now the threat is made here, so black has to play rook over, and white simply moves over. Now the threat is rook takes followed by queen mates, and I think it's already finished. I think he resigned at this point. Oh, no, maybe he played knight g6. And now a cute little move that forces checkmate. I don't know if everybody sees it, but it's it's this move. Threatening queen takes check, king takes rook mate, or threatening just rook over followed by a quick mate. And I believe there's actually no answer to this. I, you probably have to try queen takes f6 just to waste a move. But the threat is queen takes h7 check, and there's no answer. So it's a very cute little, little finish. Um, okay, let's see what we've got here. People commenting. So I think that's a nice start on that G4 idea, but but it's really more subtle than that. We'll see that next week. I'm going to continue with that next week because I think you could have a lot of fun with it for both white and black, how to play these kinds of positions. Um, da, 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 da. Watson, look at us. Why? We can't see. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Board's not updating. Darn. I see. Oh, I should have looked at the chat faster. Oh, hi, folks. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can do something about that. Now, why is that not updating? Let me just see for a second. Ah, connection closed. That would do it, wouldn't it? Okay, let me um, let me restart this. And um, what happened here? I said play online.
Oh, that's too bad. A beautiful game. You missed a beautiful game. I can try to squeeze it in anyway, but I probably won't. Uh, hang on. Yep, my connection dropped. Let me do this. Okay, that's the final position, by the way, folks. If you want to see a final position, let me go back to the chat. Thank you for being patient, everybody. Bad timing, because I was looking at the chat a lot, and then I hurried to get through that game. <laughs> okay, here we go. Whoops, how come it's not showing? It, sh it is showing on my, this is actually fascinating. It's showing on my stream, but not on my um, internet. Okay, now it's showing on the internet. Okay, um, this was the final position where white is threatening queen takes h7 check. Black, white just played the move rook g5, which threatens queen takes h7 check followed by rook h5 mate, and there's actually nothing to do about that. So the question, so you, you guys didn't even get to see it, really what the question was about at all. Oh, that's awful. So sorry. It's because I was trying to hurry because it's so late in the show. Let, let's get started. Let's show the start. Let, let me show you what I was showing Forget this game for a second. Let me just show you another another game, like the Kasparov or the or the um, or the Carlson game. It doesn't really matter which one. Percentage. What we're talking about is this particular structure, which usually comes from this order. Uh, one of these orders. This kind of an order. Actually, this is not the most common order, but it's similar. Now, I was just saying you can play. The, oh, so you saw none of this. Is that right? You guys saw absolutely none of this? Oh, I don't know when you lost the, uh, the line, but I think you lost it before this. And I was just explaining that you always have to watch out for these tricks on D4, like the one we just saw. There's one here, too, which is to take and to take, winning a valuable center pawn. And if he plays bishop here, you can just go check, and maybe you're okay. You got your queen. You saved your queen. There may even be another way to do that. The problem is that, again, white wins a piece by playing this move, attacking the queen. The queen has to defend the knight, and then you trap the knight. The knight's still trapped. But you always have to be careful about things like that when you're playing a move like c4, that, to make sure you aren't uh, actually just losing material. Anyway, this position, white has two bishops for nothing, really. He has the cent nice center and, two, and a bishop pair versus a not very good bishop, and this is just better for white. So that's why black plays takes here. And then white plays this move, f3, an old-fashioned move. Now, white could just play bishop d3, and you'd be in just a standard Nimzu Indian position. But this is another standard Nimzu Indian position. And this position with f3 is kind of forced if you play f3 first. Uh, and let me show you what I mean by that. If you're in a Nimzu Indian and you just play f3 first, let me just show you that. And this is this is the uh, Carlson, uh, Anand Carlson, although I don't remember the exact order, but I think it was this. Um, castles... A3 takes, takes, D5 takes, takes, E3. So we get the exact same position. And the question that Colin is asking me about this week has to do with these structures with G4, which is what happens in this game, by the way. Let me just show you that. Uh, oh, it isn't, it isn't this game. Let me show you the exact order of the Polgar game. There, with F3. So what happened in the Polgar game and in the Carlson game is Black played this move C4. I don't remember if he played it one move later, but but in any case, that's the structure that we got to. I think they both played it in this exact position, actually. And it's a fascinating game. Yeah, this is the very last game of the match. Yes. And yeah, sorry about that. You guys must have had no idea what I was talking about. I was showing all these things. I thought I was being good. Um, but this is the G4 idea he's asking about for white, which is to play G4, not now, but next move uh, here. And um, Sometimes G4 is actually played earlier than that, but I won't show you that. That's a, that's against a different move order. Uh, and this is his basic question: Is what are White's plans? Why does White play this way? And I, by by implication, what should Black do against this kind of opening? And we'll look at all this next week. And what I was doing was I was actually starting you out with a different kind of G4 structure. This is the um, this is the Kasparov Polgar game, and uh, very similar to the Carlson game, but. But on the other hand, not that similar. <laughs> it, it deviates fairly, fairly radically. But it's the same idea, the same pawn structure, and the same idea of playing knight here and knight here and getting rid of that bishop. Because after all, if white can play e4 and keep that bishop, he's, he's got everything going for him because black has no more pressure on the center. So I guess I, guess I should stop there because to show even one of these whole games would be a little funny. But we'll start next week with a game that didn't actually have this exact move order, but really illustrates G4 ideas for white. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on. 
and uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, that's funny. Okay, and, and I'm going to show you the game. Uh, what game is it that I'm really interested in? Oh, this game between Kachiashvili, actually Kachiashvili versus Jenny, uh, an older game that is actually a really beautiful game. And uh, we'll do that next week. We'll start with that next week. Thanks, everybody, for coming on. Sorry we lost the picture there. And we will, uh, hopefully, I'll see you again next week, same time, not same time, same place, back at the normal time, 6 p.m. Eastern daily, daily time. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next week.